Recently, Mayor Eric Garcetti has named the first woman ever to lead the city's fire department. If confirmed, Kristen Crowley will replace Chief Ralph Terrazas, who is retiring in March. Today, I am nominating Kristen Crowley, who is currently serving as acting chief deputy and fire marshal. Extraordinary firefighter, human being, and protector of our city. Crowley has served LAFD for 22 years. Fox 11's Laura Diaz joins us now live from downtown LA with more on the nominee. Laura. Yes, this was a big move for the department where more than half of its sworn female employees, they complain of harassment, they complain of bullying, but if anyone can change the culture, let it be Kristen Crowley. You know, what an amazing opportunity, but I do feel ready. Tuesday morning, the winds of change blew through L.A. like a Santa Ana event. Chief Respected L.A. City Fire Chief Ralph Terrazas announced his retirement after 39 years on the job. At a news conference, Mayor Eric Garcetti announced a history-making nominee, the first female to ever lead the L.A. Fire Department. Today I am nominating Kristen Crowley. A 22-year veteran of the L.A. City Fire Department. Crowley distinguished herself within the department with tough assignments, including paramedic, firefighter, captain, and chief deputy. We met right after the announcement. Nice to meet you. Crowley told me this was a day she had not imagined, but somehow it felt right. I was never really shooting for that. I just took it day by day, trying to understand my job and how to better lead and manage our people. And whatever fell, you know, in front of me, those opportunities, it was due to hard work, but it was a lot of uh, support and uh, mentoring along, along the way. If confirmed as the first woman, she will have a task ahead of her, taking the reins of a department trying to operate while COVID-19 continues to be a health emergency. Focusing on the why why we're here as an organization, why we're here as firefighters, why our firefighters come to work each and every day knowing what they don't know, meaning with the COVID and the variants and everything that's happening. Crowley is married. She and her wife, Holland, who is retired from the LA City Fire Department, have three young daughters. She reflected today on what it means to be a role model. And I'm ecstatic to be in the position to show uh, both young girls and boys that hey this is this is important that we have people in positions of authority that work hard and you're rewarded for it i must say she was very engaging when we think about the numbers here in the la city fire department 3,727 employees, 3,174 of them are fully vaccinated. That's an 85% rate. At 6 o'clock, I'll have more with Ms. Crowley and what this could mean to the city of L.A. Laura Diaz reporting live from downtown Los Angeles. Alex and Marla, back to you. All right, Laura, we will see you at 6. And then Deputy Chief Crowley will join us live tonight at 7 o'clock for the Fox 11 News special report. Oh, to this historic nomination. Today I am nominating Kristen Crowley, who is currently serving as acting chief deputy and fire marshal. Extraordinary firefighter, human being, and protector of our city. For the first time in its 136 year history, the Los Angeles Fire Department may have its first female fire chief. Deputy Chief Kristen Crowley will take over the top position if the nomination is approved by the city council. She currently serves as LAFD's deputy chief and fire marshal. She's been with the department for 22 years and also serves as program director for LAFD's youth development program. Deputy Chief Crowley. Congratulations. Well, for the Fox 11 News special report for the very first time. How are you feeling tonight? What are you thinking about? Oh, thank you so much. Uh, I really enjoy listening to your show. I'm, I'm excited, um, elated, I'm calm. If you can have all those emotions all in one, that's what I'm feeling. Uh, ultimately, what does today mean to you? Yeah, you know, today it's historical, obviously, and uh, it's an important step uh, for the organization and for the city. But, you know, I'm really feeling uh, excited about the LEFD's future and what uh, what we're going to be and what we're going to evolve into. So that's uh, I'm just really excited about the opportunity. 
Uh, well, speaking of, uh, I want to talk about, as we're looking at the photos of you, there's a lot of men in those photos. In other words, it's, it's a male-dominated industry. We do have some numbers, some breakdown on how it breaks down, but about 3.5% of LAFD is female. Uh, there, there it is. Uh, out of 3,300-plus total sworn members, there's just 117 female, so 3.5% female there's been unfortunately allegations of a, of a cult culture of racism and sexism i want to know female to female have you experienced this have you witnessed it uh and you as chief what will you do to handle this and improve the culture sure so you know my journey is unique just like everybody's journey uh in the lafd my experiences have been very positive. I've had a handful of issues that have occurred where I was able to handle those issues at a very low level, just one-on-one -on -one with a member that perhaps uh, was inappropriate or whatever, whatever the case may be. So my experience, though, rising up through the ranks uh, has been very positive. I've had a lot of support and, uh, and mentorship throughout my entire career. But as for the steps that we could take in, as an organization within the LAFD, uh, it's really important that we set uh, the accountability first and foremost in regard to if our members do step out and act inappropriately at any time, we'll be held accountable after obviously due process. So first and foremost is setting that expectation. Also creating an environment where any member across the board, whether it's male or female, they have the trust in the system in which we have within our investigative process. So that's set in place. So that will be two of the main things is, is ensuring that our members understand that. Uh, consequences for actions, uh, most definitely. Uh, another question I have for you. Uh, in 2004, I was a reporter in San Francisco. Almost 20 years ago, I interviewed the first woman to be named uh, the chief of San Francisco Fire Department. It's almost been 20 years, and now you are the first. What do you think, why has it taken so long? Yeah, I'm not sure why it's taken so long. I do know that we have a lot of fully dedicated professionals who work their way up through the ranks. I can speak for my own journey, and I've been very thoughtful and strategic in ensuring that I understand my job and I have the credibility and I understand what needs to be done to lead the organization. So I'm really looking forward to this particular opportunity for the LEFD to evolve and grow. Uh, let's talk for a moment about the, the vaccine mandate, uh, which I know uh, Chief Terrazas uh, has talked a lot about recently. Right now, about 85% of LAFD is vaccinated, but that 15% that is not, many of them really, really do not want to be vaccinated. As you've heard, there's firefighters for freedom. There are rallies of people that are saying that they're not going to do this, that they would be fired first before doing it. What is your take on the vaccine mandate? And if these folks don't get vaccinated, are you indeed in favor of firing them and potentially having less firefighters as a process? Right. So understanding that we do have 85% of our members who are in alignment with the vaccine vaccine mandate. So they're the ones that are at work doing their jobs and serving the community. Out of the uh, 555 members that are not vaccinated, we have 330 or excuse me, 393 members that have filed for exemptions, either through religious or medical. So those members have a pathway. Uh, we're processing those exemptions and there's a path forward. Now you asked about the, the individuals who then choose not to be vaccinated or they don't go through the exemption side of things. And the city has a process for that. The department has a process for that in regard to allowing the members due process if they don't follow the mandate that the city leaders have put out for all city employees, including the LAFD. So what I'm hearing is basically kind of the continuation of the process that's happening right now. We're going to fall in alignment with the city ordinance and make sure that we are educating and focusing our the education effort with the members so they understand what the vaccinations and boosters offer in regard to protecting themselves as well as the community that we serve. All right, I want to get personal with you. Do you mind? Are you okay with that? <laughs> we have some uh, images of your wife. You have three daughters. Talk about... Uh, the family aspect of, you know, what, what it's like uh, to be a role model to your three little girls. 
Sure. So that's definitely a lot of motivation uh, behind, you know, the, the direction that I've gone in, uh, providing that opportunity for my girls and our girls, our daughters to see, you know, with a lot of hard work and dedication, what uh, you can achieve. So that's a lot of motivation on my end, but it also goes beyond our own kids. It, it allows others within the community, both uh, young girls and young boys and men and women alike, to see uh, a person like me be able to rise through the ranks of this organization and end up in a leadership position. What'd your daughter say? They, they're they happy. They, they, you're gonna be on the news again, Mom? So it's kind of funny. They look at it from a different perspective, Aww. but um, what, it keeps me fresh, it keeps me grounded. I thank God every day for my wife and our kids. And that's, uh, that's what it's all about. That's awesome. Yes, and Deputy Chief Crowley, you can tell your kids that you'll be back on the news tomorrow with us. <laughs> You're going to be joining Good Day LA live tomorrow morning at 7.45 a.m. So our viewers out there, please watch for that tomorrow morning. And we know that your wife is also retired LAFD, so no doubt she's very proud of you, as we all are. Thank you so much for being with us tonight. And again, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you for having me.